The Grady series. Why did it fail? The easy answer is, enough people didn't watch. There, we're done. But why didn't they watch is the next question. Grady Wilson was one of the most popular characters in Sanford and Son after just one season. Aunt Esther was even more popular and had been there two years. So why not give her a show? Because as much as we love Aunt Esther, watch it sucka and you old heathen can get tired fast for 30 minute shows week in and week out. Bubba, Julio, Rollo were all popular characters and had great success. So why give a show to a new comer? Because he already proved he could be successful. Red Fox leaving the show put the producers in some trouble. The previously mentioned characters had all been established and wouldn't be able to fit the co-lead role with Damon Wilson. But with Whitman Mayo's character, he was known for being friends with Fred all the way back to St. Louis, even before Lamont was born. And he couldn't remember Lamont's name. Something that changed when he took over with Fred away. Grady changed from a quiet kind of guy who continued to have stories about old friends dying to making dinners for Lamont and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the great Aunt Esther. The weekly ratings never dipped despite Fred being away. Some of the most popular episodes, such as Lamont Goes Karate or A Visit from Cousin Emma, are preferred so well with Grady. It's hard to picture Fred doing these episodes. Season 4's top fan episode is Fred's Treasure Garden. Ironically, Fred isn't in it. This got producers thinking, we could ride this success and have two top hit shows. It could have been done if the writers had done one thing, made it funny. The Grady Show intro sets up the show completely. It screams of 80s sitcom about four years too early. We meet Grady's daughter, played by Carol Cole, Nat King Cole's daughter, who is a talented actor, but doesn't feel believable at times. Her husband, played by Joe Morton, feels so out of place, he has a hard time looking into co-star's eyes at times. Just gives that high school acting vibe. He's a great actor, don't get me wrong, but this just didn't feel natural with him. The kids were typical sitcom kids, around just when convenient for a quick joke, then they were off to school or to hang out with friends. Haywood Nelson, who would go on to play Dwayne in What's Happening, is just wasted in this show. He's a good looking kid that can act. At least we get to see him shine a few years later. Roseanne Caton played the oldest child, the daughter Lori. Her acting and character would fit in perfectly on a show like Saved by the Bell, but a primetime show built around comedy, she just didn't deliver the laughs. The cast had talent, but when the captain treats his ship like the Titanic, when it's really a small sailboat, you won't get the desired results. Only 10 episodes in, and it was sadly canceled. In the end, the cast and writers both did what they were told. To me, it was a producer's problem. The formula was already on display week in and week out with Grady and Lamont. Now they can't use Lamont, but the show could have been based behind the same principle. Perhaps Grady moves in with a younger Ron Glass type actor, someone similar, and we have a father slash son type relationship, bringing in a good friend, Otis Littlejohn, and even Leroy and Skillet as well for many visits. Perhaps the property owner is a grouchy Esther type lady. It was all for their taking, but someone higher up went with the wrong show idea. It was a major missed opportunity. The love for Grady was at an all time high. Sanford and Son was the number two show in the nation and us fans are the ones who really lose out. The only thing better than 136 episodes of Sanford and Son is if we could have added 100 episodes of Grady to go along with it. At least we always have when Fred went to St. Louis and Grady got to show us what could have been had it been done right. If you enjoyed anything you heard today, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe.